It is the top of the hour, so I will start the webinar. Um, thank you all uh, for joining us. Welcome to the webinar. Um, the webinar today, The Business of Coaching, is part of a webinar series of Coaching Out of the Box. Um, a little bit, we'll get into a little bit about Coaching Out of the Box um, in a few moments. Um, wanted to start us off by just sharing the vision and mission, um, which is based on the question, we love questions as coaches, uh, what if everyone had coaching skills? And our vision is to see that they will, and our mission is to see that they do. Um, you'll notice that I am recording today. Um, there's a reason for that. Uh, we not only do we send you the information afterwards with the slides and their copy of the recording, so anyone who's not here today can, who is re registered can watch. We also pop them on our website um, where if you've ever traveled to our website, I encourage you to do that. We have a bunch of information um, on, the, on our website about everything coaching and coaching out of the box. I'll introduce myself. I am Rosa Edinga. I am one of the coach facilitators at Coaching Out of the Box. I am so excited to be here today with you um, to talk about the business of coaching, which is fun for me because as a dish, in addition to being a coach facilitator, um, I have been an internal coach, an internal leadership coach in a large organization and have had my own coaching practice for a bit over six years. Um, so I may have said, I may have in error said that I'm the host. Um, I'm actually the co-host. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing our, my co-host, um, our fearless leader at Coaching Out of the Box, <laughs> CEO, uh, founder, and master certified coach, Allison Hendren. So um, Allison, you do a fantastic job of introducing yourself because your passion for coaching comes out. So if I can ask you to say a few words and then we'll start. Okay. Well, thanks, Rosa, and it's great to see everybody here. I, uh, I'm recognizing some names uh, and uh, faces, too, so that's great. And, yeah, I, I am absolutely passionate about coaching and what it can do and who it impacts. And I can't tell you, every single day, every single day, I get an email or a call or somebody sends me a comment and tells me about the impact that coaching has had on them and their lives. And it's so how rewarding is that to, to be able to hear that just had somebody yesterday contact me just had somebody this morning share something with me about uh, the value of coaching and I'm talking about the value of coaching that is being uh, provided to people as well as the incredible um, power and uh, impact of being a coach and having making uh, supporting others in tapping into their ideas wisdom brilliance etc etc so I think I've said enough there but as you can tell I'm I'm pretty keen about coaching and absolutely in in talking about what we're talking about today too mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, yes, as we go through today, not only will we be talking about a plethora of, of information, we'll also be where we can injecting some of our personal stories. And Allison's um, history with a coaching business and being a coach um, will definitely be shared. So thank you, Allison. Mm -hmm. We have another wonderful person on our call today. Um, Sandra Mall is the uh, I was trying to think of the word, whether it's spectacular, fabulous. Um, she's all of that. She's pretty phenomenal. She's our program advisor at Coaching on the Box. So, Sandra, I'm going to put your picture up because it's still Allison. Um, if I can get you to say a few words and introduce yourself, um, and then we'll run in. Hi, all. My name is Sandra, and I, again, I'm the program advisor here at Coaching Out of the Box. I'll be monitoring the chat today. So if you have any questions, comments, please put them in the chat. If you have any questions about our programs or our products or coaching in general, please feel free to reach out at any time. I'm always happy to have a conversation with you. Thanks, Sandra. And when she says it, she means it. Um, so as you're going through, if you have questions about our programs or anything on the website or really anything at all, um, contact Sandra. Um, we'll send, we'll have a link here, but there is some details later on in the PowerPoint as well on how you contact her. So, we know a little bit about us, um, and I'm hoping to find out, and we're hoping to find out a little bit about you. 
Um, we have a really quick uh, poll that I'm going to ask you to take a few minutes. I'm just launching it. Take a few minutes to answer the questions about are you credentialed? Have you used a coach? Um, have you taken coach training? Are you ICF credentialed? Because that's also a distinction. And uh, do you currently have a coaching business? So a few minutes, not, you know, we're not going to spend a lot of time, but we want to know who's on, the, who's on the webinar today. This way, hopefully, as we go through, um, we can infuse some information that is targeted to what you are bringing and who you are and uh, not to miss some of that stuff. So um, I will have it open for, you know, probably another 10 seconds. I see there's quite a few people who are already pulling it up. So thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to close it up in about 10 seconds. So thank you all. And I'll kind of go through and show you again who else is on the call. Um, so I'm going to end the polling um, and I'm going to share the results. So when you're talking about, are you a credentialed coach? It's interesting. It's kind of a 50-50 split. Um, have you used a coach? 96% of you have used a coach. 96% of you have sat in that chair and felt that power of being in a coaching conversation, um, having that space held so that you can, you know, maximize how you get to your goals. Um, have you taken coach training? 96% have said yes. So this is cool. Um, and are you wanting to gain ICF credentials? 72% have said yes, 16% um, no, and 12% uh, have said, look, I already have one. Um, so then we'll be able to focus on that. And then 72% of you said you have your own coaching business already. So um, as Sandra said, comments, questions, pop them into the chat. We will be monitoring that. We'll be getting to as many questions. That's what the richness is for us, is making this as relevant to you as possible. So what are our objectives? Um, today, we're going to talk about, you know, really th this emerging, this growing need for coaching. Uh, Allison talked a little bit about her plethora of emails um, and comments that she gets every single day. Talk a little bit about coach credentialing. Um, some of you may have a credential, some of you may want to, to pursue a credential or another credential. Uh, what clients want um, and then strategies for success. Our hope is as you walk away from the webinar, you have more information. You have the information you need to make better decisions about what you want, where to from here. Um, again, coaching is all about that action plan. Where do you, what do you do with the information you have now? So how can we, serve, how can we support that? So I'm going to turn it to my wonderful co-host. We're going to be just tag teaming all the way through. It's sort of a conversation. So Allison, you want to talk about adapting to change? Oh, you know, this is really, uh, thanks Rosa, well said. This is really why coaching has grown why it's it's in existence why people are uh it's growing too it's continuing to grow is because of this incredible change that we're going through that is so quick so uh, i mean i was um speaking to a group of people uh doing a keynote and one of the things that i said to them and there was about 200 people in the audience at the time and i said in this pat it was a thursday and so i said this just in the last week raise your hand if you've had to deal with a situation some new technology something um, that you have never had to deal with before and I would say at least 80% of the people raised their hands. So this is just huge, 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 huge. I mean, many years ago, it wasn't that case, but it is that case now. And coaching is needed to support that because we can't figure it out ourselves. We don't have all the solutions. It's not the top-down approach anymore. And this, this may be old information, but I think it's really important to always recognize that these wonderful human beings that we are you know, uh, working with and supporting are dealing with this very, very dramatic, sudden, at times, complex, very complex change that, that is not 
necessarily always easy to to quickly respond to quickly um, deal with I also wanted to just mention so so that everybody's clear about this too is the demand the demand for coaching for people to to be coached to experience coaching is continuing to grow and I was reading um, ICF the International Coach Federation which is uh, uh, the largest professional association of coaches in the world in over 100 countries hired price has hired price waterhouse coopers to conduct some uh, global studies on coaching and uh, this is just a little bit but you can go to the ICF website and and look for it there or search for it there the study the study in its entirety but they started to benchmark back in 2007 anyway they the the most recent one that they did was 216 so we're still you know we're a few years out from when that came out it came out in 217 actually but they researched it and or they conducted it in 216 anyway what they came what the 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 basic uh, things that they came up with what with was that it is expanded coaching has expanded beyond coaching practitioners in other words um, coaches like many of you are it's also expanded so that leaders need to have these skills managers HR talent and development professionals learning uh, that they, they all need to be using this and having more coach like conversations as well and this is this has grown since uh, since they started to benchmark it and the average income uh, you globally and they're they're basing this on US uh, dollars is $61,900 US that is being made by people who are coaching uh, and I said something slightly wrong globally its average is 51,000 US globally and the total revenue that is coming that is being spent on coaching is 2.356 billion US dollars and it is up over 19% so almost 20% since 2011 so this demand the relentless change the the demand for coaching um, has grown by I mean I think that's pretty profound 20% almost 20% since 2011 and the other thing is that they said of the respondents who took the who were answered the questionnaires etc said that they expect 75% of them expected it to increase so I think that's really important for us to get that uh, and why I mention it here is that there is a need and it's growing so there you go <laughs> So I'll let Rosa move on next. <laughs> awesome. So Allison talked a little bit about the International Coach Federation. Um, so we asked the question, why hold a credential? And we asked the question of you as a poll, at the beginning of the poll, how many of you hold a credential? And then specifically, how many of you hold a credential from the ICF or, or want to pursue an ICF credential? Um, and for me, as we, as we talk about this, it's, we were able to distill it almost in, in kind of three places. Why? Why hold a credential? It, it, it does take time. It takes effort. Um, so what's the return? And one of them is that credibility piece. Um, Allison mentioned the ICF is the largest organization of coaches in the world. Um, they have really high standards. They've been... They have a commitment to making sure those standards are high, um, given the emergent uh, the emerging nature of the coaching industry. Um, they want to make sure that they're, they're that gold standard. Um, as a, you know, even just as a, Allison mentioned that global study that they did with PricewaterhouseCoopers, out of the respondents, 83% said that they wanted a credentialed coach. They wanted, you know, it gives that credibility. It gives the, um, you know, there's an independent certification there is the credibility that I'm not just putting out a shingle. I actually, there is a, there's a rigor. There's a high standard if you're an ICF credentialed coach. Um, the other, you know, one of the other really rich places or really important places for me is differentiation. Having an ICF credential, again, there's 35,000 members of the ICF in 147 countries. 
Of those, 22,000 hold a, one of the three credentials. Um, so that tells you, again, there's this, there's the membership, which is large, and then there's this, you know, smaller group um, that have done the work, um, met the standards, continue to do the development needed to keep your credential. Um, so t the 22,000, uh, again, that it just, again, is, is more of a group of people that holding a credential helps you distinguish yourself in this emerging, uh, in this emerging industry of coaching. Um, you know, again, anyone can say, hey, I'm a coach. They may be really powerful coaches. They may not be. The ICF, uh, it, it says here's, here's a differentiation. I'm not just a commodity, if you wanted to look at it that way, with the amount of coaches there are in the world. Um, there's also a leg legitimacy that comes with an ICF credential. Um, meeting the requirements of the ICF, whether it's hours of training, hours of practice, um, continued professional development, code of ethics, which is huge. Um, it lends legitimacy to your craft, lends legitimacy to your experience. Um, for me, it also, I know have, having been both an internal and an external coach, um, someone who's worked in an organization and then contracted to an organization, Many organizations now are saying, if I have a coach, whether internally or externally, I want them to be credentialed because again, it gives that legitimacy of, of that experience. It gives almost, um, you know, it, it saves, I, I've said it before, it saves me that a few, you know, 10 minutes at the beginning of a conversation to talk about my experience and what I've done and, and the grounding of my coaching because I've talked about, I said that I had a credential. So um, for us, it's, you know, and Alice and I actually, it, interesting, she, she's like sometimes the voice in my head. Um, <laughs> I was talking to someone about uh, credentialing and they said like how important and I had said get one, you know, move forward. Yes, I just start with one, um, start with the ACC. And again, it just gives you that grounding um, and, and brings, you know, that uh, kind of those check marks to it. So um, Alison, that was a piece of advice you gave and I've just... <laughs> with me. Um, so <laughs> I'm actually going to pass it to Allison for a couple of slides to talk about what clients want um, and then start the strategy of what, how, where to from here for you. Okay. And yes. Okay. So this is pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, the slide that I'm showing, but they want somebody who can be their thinking partner with them. I mean, you can see the, the comments on the screen, but it, it's, it, they, they, as we talked about this, this whole pace of change, the whole demand that is going on uh, out there in the world of work and in the world period, they need someone that they can go to. I have a coach, for example. I, I, I've had different coaches over the course of my um, uh, time in coaching and there's just, it, it's complex. There's more uh, difficulty. So if we, as the coach, can be there to support them during the time that we speak with them, during the time that they work with them, to move farther, faster, easier, quicker than they would have without a coach, that's huge. I know for myself, it will build up for me up to the meeting that I'm having with my coach. I'll, I'll, I'll notice there's sort of different things that are building up. And I find by having that concerted time, to work with my coach that when I walk, uh, when we end, I've got this lighter feeling. I've got this lighter feeling and this feeling that I can move forward and I can take action and I can make something happen. And so um, that's what I feel is so important. And they want to be confident that you can support them in that. And I'm, I just want to uh, just go back briefly to um, Rosa's comment about the credential side of it. The, the other thing is, and it certainly was the case for me and continues to be, it gives me confidence that mm. I have done, have, that I have gone through the rigor. And I, I still remember in the early days of my coaching, I always, I always felt, well, I didn't really know anything. And I, you know, I, what, why would anybody bother to, to pay me and so on? And having a credential or obtaining it or being on the pathway 
being on the pathway is fine too because it takes some time so if you you know when you're starting out in coaching you might not have the credential right away that's that's kind of pretty obvious and so but if if people know that you're on the pathway as well that also can really support you because they want to they want to believe that that person that they're going to work with is going to you know be able to support them obviously if you get a referral hey that's fantastic and by the way you know i know we have when we when we um did the little poll at the beginning feel free to share what's worked for you as well in the in the chat area and i i know i had a few emails from a few people before the the webinar and so happy to hear that as well but these are the things and yes energy they are mobilized to take action if you're not supporting them in moving forward and taking action, it's not going to last very long. So these, I feel, are, are the key things. And something else I wanted to mention that I, I, I meant to mention a little bit earlier was that, and, and this connects with the, with the growth, growth of coaching, is that the, that more and more organizations are really recognizing that this is a unique and important and valuable tool that many of their people uh, need or everyone needs. And um, I think that it's, it's that uh, improvement in the manager, the leader, the professional, the individual, to be able to move forward. This forward movement and not uh, staying stuck is so, um, it, it's just so needed now. And so clients want that. What else do clients want? Anybody else heard something different than what, what I've been saying? Feel free to throw that in uh, the chat area as well. All right, I'll, I'll be quiet for a moment. <laughs> Actually, Allison, I think you're still taking. Oh, that. that's right. Sorry, so we're not allowing you to be quiet. You're yes, that's right. Through that, so, Allison. <laughs> so that's right. I'm sorry. I apologize. So here's the thing. On this webinar, I know we have a number who already have a coaching business. Rosa, you talked about you've been is been uh, you started uh, your coaching business six years ago, and. There are, you have to, we need to know what are our strategies? What is our way of succeeding at this? And over the years, I've seen so many, um, I've seen a variety of different ways that people have come at that. So you need to find out and you need to determine what is your smart way of getting being successful for some of you and and what is your vision how will you know how will you know when you've got there what is it that's going to tell you oh yeah I'm doing it it's it's happening because here's what I see out there in the marketplace I see a mix in other words, there are people who add coaching in to their, they want to add and get a credential and they want to add it to their resume. That's a strategy that they're using to support them being more employable in certain situations. We, we're getting, um, by the way, that's coming up more and more that we're, we're seeing that and we're hearing that. Also, what I'm also seeing is that Many people, their strategies are um, really unique to themselves and really unique to what is it that, that's going to work for them. And I'm seeing a mix. In other words, there will be people who are coaching internally, but they're also coaching externally. In other words, they're not necessarily, hmm, how can I say this? They're not necessarily just immediately quitting their job and you know, okay, I've hung out my shingle and I'm doing this. They are really thinking it through and trying to figure out. And usually it's a, it's a longer term plan. Rosa, what, you know, in your case, say. I laugh whenever I, I you know, you ask me that because I have right. your, again, it's your voice in my head. Um, <laughs> because I have, um, I had a coaching practice and a job job. 
Um, and that's the, you know, Allison uses that a lot. It's, it's the, you know, we'll talk a little bit in, about even strategies and how. Um, and I was doing as much coaching as I could and trying to bring it into my job job, which eventually turned into being a coach. And it was this, what was the right mix for me? What was the right time for me to, um, to kind of ring the bell and, and say, okay, you know what, now I'm going to leave my job job um, and focus completely on my coaching practice. So I, I wholeheartedly agree when you talk about, you know, what's your vision? Um, like, what, do you, what is it going to look like? And, you know, given some advice as well of, okay, so I know you love doing this, leaving um, and we talk about risks, even as an entrepreneur, there's risks, smart risks, and then there's being reckless. Um, so this is a, you know, have your plan, talk to people, um, and, and do both at the same time. Um, before we move on, Allison, there's mm. a question in the chat, and I think it relates a bit to that question ah. you want. And I think it's a great question. So I thought I'd point it out uh, for you to address before we move yeah. on to the strategy. Right. It, this is good. And hi, Janice. <laughs> I recognize the name of the person who's asking the question. And um, so uh, do they only move if the pain is enough? Depends. <laughs> it depends. Uh, that's a great question. Um, I have seen a mix. It, you know, it, it is necessarily pain. Sometimes it's pain and change. Sometimes it's drive and ambition. People who, people who are um, great coaching clients are up to something. In other words, they're, they're, they're wanting to get somewhere. Not all, not, I, I don't mean um, necessarily every single time, but they're up to something because they're, they're open to, to working with a thinking partner. They're working with a coach to support them in whatever it is that they're wanting to um, achieve. So mm, great question. It, I, I would say it really depends on the, the client that I've worked, you know, with all the different ones that I've worked with over the years. Yeah, sometimes it's a crisis right? A crisis, but not, not always. It's, it's got a, it, there's something else as well that they can be going for. It depends on their motivation. It depends on where they're at. So these strengths, and I want you to think about as you are um, growing and, 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 and expanding uh, your coaching work, it's, these are the strategies that I have really seen, um, make a difference and they're not what I thought when I got into coaching it was um, you know I felt like I had to have all this business expertise and absolutely absolutely um, there are those components but it was really about what was what was required of me to be able to put myself out there and these are the ones that we're going to go into a little bit more detail but be thinking about what is going to be absolutely ideal for you? What would be absolutely ideal? And absolutely, and who would be absolutely ideal to be your ideal coaching client? Who, who is this person going to be? Who, who is that? What, what would be that if you, you know, were to wake up in the morning and know that you were speaking to a particular uh, client, what would be the qualities that that client has? Uh, and how, as I mentioned before, how will you know that you are successful? What is going to tell you that, that this, is, this is working for you? Very, very important. And I found that these ones that I'm mentioning here, and, and like I said, we're going to be going through, through that, they mobilized me. They mobilized me to take action because I... Um, you know, I, I was uh, shy. I was nervous about doing this. And then I, and, and I also got hung up with what gives me the right to do this because I had this belief that suddenly I had to be this massive expert in every single thing that anybody could ever possibly bring up. And that's not the case in coaching. So... I'll, Rosa, I'll let you move on to the to the next one. And that's actually a really great segue um, mm. because when we talk about that experimentation, it comes from 
letting go of that, oh my gosh, this needs to be perfect. I need to have, I, I need to be the perfect, I need to have expertise, I ha need to have everything in, you know, in my toolbox before I even step into potentially having my own coaching practice. What this experimentation is about is, again, that t being willing to take risks. I talked a little bit about smart risks as opposed to or versus being reckless. Um, this is about trying different things. Um, I think some of us, as we start our coaching, we try, we hit, you know, if we're going through a learning, we use that as a, a learning lab and we try, oh, try this question on, or, hey, you know, I don't know if this is going to, asking the client, I don't know if this is going, if this is the right question, but, and that, or, and, and, and asking that, um, kind of giving that liberty to try, hear your own voice, be grounded in your own you know, your own coaching practice, or if you're, you know, depending on where you are, try, try different things, try setting up group coaching or a triad and coaching and, and documenting how that went, because this is about testing, um, testing what works for you, testing what um, potentially where your client base is. Um, in some cases, what lights you up, you'll work with different clients and just be curious about all of that. And you'll see, hey, this is what lights me up. And um, so that's where that experimentation is. Um, again, coach someone who you have no expertise in their, in, in their area at all, because then it pushes that thought of we're not the experts, they are. So letting that go um, in that experimentation. So it was that encourage that experimentation. And Allison talked about it, get a coach. Um, I always talk to people who are saying, I want to get a coach or, you know, starting a coaching program. And, and they, and I say, be weary of a coach who doesn't have a coach uh, for a couple of reasons. One is as people who see the value in the conversations in the space and having a thinking partner, if we really find it valuable, are we, you know, why don't we have one? Really the more powerful pieces have one, whether it's that business coach or giving that, you know, the space for you to, what are you creating a business or how do you refine your coaching? Um, there's that space about getting, you know, valuing yourself and your success enough to say, hey, how am I going to get a thinking partner? How am I going to get a coach? Um, so get a coach. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the ICF peer-to-peer -peer when we talk about, you know, but later on um, where they have both an element of, you know, being coached and coaching, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. I'll leave that, I'll leave that as a little bit of a surprise for later. Um, so I will, uh, <laughs> I think the next slide when we talk about strategies um, and being a secret, Allison, I think when you talk about it, uh, you, that whole, you know, passion of don't be a secret comes out. So I'll pass it along to you. Yeah. And this is, this is critical. Um, people need to know what you do mm -hmm. and and that's whether you're internal in an organization or doing a mix of both I, I have spoken to so many people who never even uh, recognized that or not never even they just didn't think of it in that way that within their organization they never um, let people know that they had this because there's some that get into coaching and they take the coach training and they're not in an actual coaching role within the organization they want to be or they want to be doing it externally and to me uh and in my experience it is an education you have to let people know what you're doing you have to make it you know very clear that you are um you know that you have these abilities that you have these skills and that you're using them whether or not you're being paid directly for them but that you're actually using them and people are noticing uh, noticing a difference when they have a conversation with you that adds value and those people those people can be your advocates so so um those people can grow your confidence. They can make it so that you're, um, you know, you're able to, to expand and, and, and deliver coaching services more so than if not, you can't, um, you can't move forward with this unless you're prepared to let it out and share what is it going to be. And, and I want you to think about this. What is it going to take for people to know what you do, to people to know what you offer. What, it, what are you going to do to make that happen? And what are you prepared to invest? Oh, that's awesome. You know, yes. what are you 
prepared to invest to make this a success for yourself? And uh, we've mentioned it before is, you know, how is it that you're going to know that you're successful? But it's really, um, you have to, you, you know, you have to, you have to get out there. And I, I know one, uh, one thing that I did uh, was uh, because I didn't feel I knew enough people. And yet I did, but I didn't feel that way. So I had to get out there and mix with people, networking functions. I did have a lot of chicken lunches. <laughs> that was just the thing uh, at the time. But it helped so much in getting me out there and getting me speaking about it and having words to say, you know, um, what is going to be if somebody says what you do, I've, I've written this down. Um, you need to be prepared to say, you know, I work with people who are up to something. I'm not saying that's what you're going to say, but what is going to be what you're going to tell people? In other words, it, it, you can say, well, I'm an executive coach or I'm a business coach or I'm a coach, but what does that mean? And what is the, the outcome as a result of them working with you, that, that will be really important. The more that you can define what it is that they're going to walk away with as a result of working with you. Mm -hmm. And Alison, I think that's really important, that last piece about mm -hmm. um, how do you define what you do? And again, being really clear on that, that's sometimes what it helps to have a coach um, and working through what is it? What makes me unique? What's that unique selling um, point that I have as a coach? It's also hearing it from other people. You know, sometimes clients will say, okay, well, how about, yeah, that's great. You think you're, what are other people saying about you? Um, and it takes, a, it takes courage to say, I'm going to put myself out there and not be a secret. Um, but I think bringing it back to those referrals or, you know, having others speak for you or having the power of the conversation and speak for itself um, helps move that forward and create that bigger network and say, hey, you want to talk to, you know, so-and-so um, who was my coach and this is what they did for me. So I think that's really important. Um, capitalization, it's, we talk about this kind of woven through, it's, you know, for those who are um, in, you know, having a job job, as Allison calls it, um, which I love and I steal, is how do you capitalize on that? Um, for me, I had both a coaching practice and I was an internal coach in a large organization. And I found that one, you know, one added value to the other. Um, I was able to capitalize and try different things in an organization that I then, you know, used in my private practice. Um, and it's interesting because on the other side, I also used my, you know, how I approached having a private coaching practice as that internal coach. Because again, anyone who's in, in, in that place, it's an internal service. It's kind of an internal consulting or internal um, service. So this is about looking around at where you are now. Um, whether you have your own coaching practice and capitalize on the networks and the people around you, or, you know, if you're saying, I want to have a coaching practice, I want to move forward. And this is what I do in my, you know, in my day job or my other job. It's how do you use where you are? How do you use, you know, attain other skills? How do you try things? Um, how do you use the people and the networks to leverage you as you move forward and, and kind of create a coaching practice? Um, in some cases, it's capitalizing on the strengths or the value. So getting a virtual assistant. Um, so if you're saying, here are my values, here's, this is as a business owner, my value is coaching. My value is, you know, facilitate, whatever that is, whatever the, the suite of services that you might provide, doing some of that administrative stuff may not be a strength. So capitalize on your strengths and, you know, maybe go out and get someone who's wonderfully talented at doing that to be a virtual assistant. It's also potentially if you're in that coaching space um, to say, hey, what if I became a coach educator? What if I helped not only one-on-one, -on -one, but I helped either leaders in an organization or as a suite became an educator and shared, you know, skills on how to be a coach so that you have that other impact. Um, it also will, allows for, you know, sometimes that thought leader of how do you capitalize on that network? How do you capitalize on your experience? And, you know, not being a secret um, also is that of like, how do you capitalize on the space 
and let people know what you do. Um, so, uh, did I, I was going to say, Allison, I love when yes. you add things to it. So yes, please. and I was just going to, yeah. I, I made myself a couple of notes here because I always get triggered by uh, different comments and so on. Uh, this capital, capitalizing on your, uh, and, and give yourself time is fine, okay. Rosa, it's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I, I've talked to a number of people who a key strategy was to leverage what they do within an organization. And, and several, uh, Rosa uh, touched on it, is they created coaching programs within their own organization. They brought, they created a coaching um cadre a cadre of coaches so that they had this whole story to tell mm -hmm. of what they did in xyz organization and many of them that i spoke with initially never even thought about that never even thought that there is a story to tell and the more that they can document what is happening within say the organization that they're working with the results that are being achieved by say if they were you know coaching a number of people or educating people about coaching and so on developing it internally that is a story to tell and that has tremendous value to other organizations because they're going to be when they're hiring and by the way uh, obtaining clients can come from a whole variety of ways so for example more and more organizations are putting out what they call requests for proposals right they'll put them out every so often keep an eye on those and there's various ways you can search uh, via Google for them and they uh, and and they're they're really getting very specific so your story being able to tell your story could be the decider in them shortlisting you and then hiring you as an external coach to that organization or possibly you're already in the organization and maybe you're segueing into this other area i think that's really really important to talk about that if if that's part of what you're doing the other one and this whole thing about giving yourself time is so important there is a there is information out there if you go on the internet there's various um things you'll see you know uh, become a coach in 30 days or you know uh you know make a hundred thousand in your first year and i'm going to tell you that's rare mm -hmm that is so rare and it's so full of anyway it's rare <laughs> i don't want to say much more than that but um so you know because i've seen different people come to me and they've kind of been sold a bill of goods that you know oh well all you have to do is it takes time you've got to get known you've got to get you've got to get out there you've got to build up um credibility you've got and I know different ones that are on this webinar. I know they're working with, with clients right now. Those are your advocates. Those are advocates for your service. Don't be shy about obtaining a testimonial, uh, a testimonial, a testimonial about uh, uh, asking for, um, uh, Miro, he works with newcomers, fantastic. Uh, having them be willing to be a reference for you, uh, having something written out, that is all very, very important. And I also want to share um, one thing that I, uh, well, one thing that I did uh, early on um, was I used a strategy called the pro bono coaching strategy initially, initially. And that was where I offered to coach. Uh, in my case, I, I chose five people, or I, I said, I'm going to get five people that I'm going to coach pro bono. And I laid it out to them. I didn't just sort of vaguely say, well, you know, let's just get coaching. And we'll, no, no. It was, it was a specific period of time. And in, in my case, at that time, I said, I will coach you for three months pro bono. And at the end of that time, you can either um, agree to be done uh, or if you want to carry on, this is what it, how it will be. This is what it will look like, including what was I going, you know, what was I going to charge and so on and so forth. That I was, I, and I was criticized for it, by the way. I had different people criticize me. Oh, why are you doing that? That's not, you know, and all of that. And I look at those people that criticize me and um, initially maybe I felt, 
oh, I'm not doing the right thing or whatever. But very quickly, I realized it was work for me because he, it worked beautifully for me because here's what happened. Those five people, and by the way, I, I it was people that, you know, I, uh, some, uh, a parent of a, a child at my, my child's school, for example, my sister referred somebody to me, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't magical here. It was, uh, you know, these five people, but what happened was they all became advocates for my service, which was worth its weight in gold. And I didn't know it at the time. What also happened is I joined one of those business organizations and I started to network and I said to them, I said to them, well, you know, how, how is this going to benefit me? And they said, well, we'll write an article. We, you know, we can talk about coaching. And they hired a writer to do this. And it wasn't just me. It wasn't just me who was featured in this article. But very quickly, she said to me when she contacted me, she said, well, can I talk to some of your clients? And so thank goodness I had some that I could, you know, because I thought, oh my goodness. Now they didn't know that they were uh, necessarily uh, pro bono. And I'll tell you what happened. The day that this came out in this uh, business publication, I got a phone call from someone who read about me in that article, contact me and hired, contacted me and hired me as their coach. So this pro bono strategy was worth its weight in gold, but I was very, very specific about, um, and I'm going on a bit too long, but I was very, very specific about what was going to happen. So. And I think, you know, Allison, you bring up some, again, that great point mm -hmm. of, you know, when you say give yourself time, it's also mm -hmm. give yourself time, again, that experimentation to mm -hmm. start and try and be open to and not necessarily, you know, realize that many, for many of us, this is a long game. This isn't a short, get rich. This is a, how many people can I impact? What can I do? I mm -hmm. love this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so that give yourself time. I actually just wanted to point, there was a couple questions. Yes. Um, one was, and I am going to put this I'm, at Janice, I'm going to repeat your question from earlier to the entire group. Can anyone share who their ideal client is? And as, as an example, when we talked about ideal clients, I encourage you all to throw in, if you are thinking about it, he, this is who I think my ideal client is right now. And that's evolving, uh, you know, share, share your experiences. Um, Miro, you bring up a really interesting point. The moment I mention how much I will charge clients walk away, um, so again, and I, I pointed this before I, you know, take the next slide because Allison, I've heard you talk about this very thing. And, you know, when we talk about having a coaching practice and the, how much do I, like that practicality is sometimes it is that, oh my goodness, what do I charge and, and, and how do I deal with the reaction? Reaction, I say that in a really big way. So um, wanted to oh. open that up. Okay, and I was just gonna, I was gonna mention, and a great question, because that I, okay, I could hardly blurt it out. I could hardly get those words out of my mouth when, I, oh, so, but somebody taught me something. I can't even remember who it was, but here's what I said. I said, I work on a monthly retainer, and it includes two scheduled one hour calls in in this case one hour coaching sessions unlimited emails quick calls when necessary and i charge and i'm, I'm just going to say an amount right now you know five hundred dollars i'm not saying that that's going to be the amount but then but then what i did say does that work for you mm -hmm. and that made it so that I could get those words out of my mouth because at that point you get to do it and then I I had to be quiet don't say anything else let them process let them respond back and at that point if they say well no it doesn't work for me well what would work for you if you're open to negotiating because if you're early days you want to start to get it depends. You know, I, I don't want to assume that. But for me, I was I was willing to, you know, um, negotiate a bit. And then I'd say, well, how about we do this for three months at that, you know, at an amount we agreed on. And then we will check in at that point and determine, you know, how to move forward from there. The point was having bona fide paying clients was huge mm -hmm. for my confidence. 
for me, not just for them. <laughs> okay. And I, I, I agree. Um, and it's interesting. There's that um, experimenting. Um, I know a lot of coaches will say, well, how much do I charge? And, and it becomes, how do you value what you do? And if you have people talking about what you've done and the referrals and you have this, I'll talk a little bit more about practice. Um, you get more comfortable with, here's the value of what I do. Here's some, you know, here's the results of that other clients have seen. Here's what I charge. And then being okay when either someone says, let's negotiate. Um, and being again, Allison, you talk about taking a coach approach even to the business of coaching mm -hmm. um, and being open and curious. Also, it does, you know, take a little bit to have someone, you know, recently I had a great conversation with a leader and I said, okay, and, you know, again, with practice, um, here's my, here are my different packages. And I asked that question. Thank you, Allison, for even giving me that question. And I was, as they say, ghosted. Completely, there was no comment afterwards. There was no email afterwards. There was no communication. And I'm okay with that um, because there is that once you get into it and you hear the value that people have in what you do and you have confidence in what you do and you realize there's, you know, there's not a scarcity mentality because you've done some practicing. You've, you've had some other clients who have the value. You're okay with someone saying, because they just might not be ready to make that investment. And that can be okay. Um, and that's why having that vision and the plan of the practicalities of having a coaching business need to be in place. Um, and I wanted to move to that practice, 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 practice um, place. As we move as coaches, I know coaches who've been doing this for six months. I know coaches who've been doing this for 20 years and they will say the same, just get, you know, just get into it and do more. And then you feel a bit more confident. I, you always learn something. So I would encourage you if you aren't coaching, even as part of your role, if you are, um, find ways to do what you love doing. If this is what you love doing, practice. It increases your confidence. Again, and you're grounded in that style of what do I say? What don't I say? Um, and um, the ICF also has a peer-to-peer -peer reciprocal peer coaching where for like, administrative, I think there's administrative costs on their website. They have all the details where you can, one, practice coaching with a ver variety of different coaches. Um, and two, you get coached. So you get the, you know, the value of having a coach if, you know, financially you're saying, oh, you know what, right now I can have this much. Or if you're kind of looking at that, it's for a lower cost and you get to practice. Um, so um, I would encourage you to go to the ICF website. Um, check that out. Again, practice and just keep doing it because we keep learning and refining our craft. Um, I know that there's a uh, I, I, I'm going to actually read what's on the chat, Allison. I'm going to change mm -hmm. it to the next slide. Yes, and then yes. We can get to Annette's question. Yes. Um, oh, good. Okay, um, Allison, do you want to take oh, this? Oh, sure. Then, yes. Yeah. Okay. And I'm and I'm seeing the questions. Okay, good. Uh, the See? questions on the. I love. I I love Arnetta. A brother. You've got seven brothers. My goodness, you've got a lot to <laughs> leverage there. Uh, and you know, we're dealing. Here's the thing. We're dealing with human beings who have these different roles. But really the truth is when we're working with, ex I've worked with CEOs, I've worked with uh, directors, leaders, managers, I've worked with individual contributors, they're human beings and they all, it's all about what is required of, how can I support them? in moving forward in creating whatever it is that they want. I don't, you need to be an expert. Here's the thing. You need to be an expert in how to have those coaching conversations in supporting them, not necessarily completely expert in CEOs, for example. In fact, I've, I had never been a CEO and I, I've worked with a number of them. And yet I know I can use that process. Yes, I had some business background. Yes, I had some of those things in my history, but I never necessarily uh, had been a CEO. Think about what are your strengths? What is it that you can, um, br what do you bring to the table? Because think about your own record of success in your life. What is it that you've done 
or accomplished or made happen and really think about that and how you can you can leverage that in terms of your um moving forward as a, as an executive coach a business coach or a, you know whatever whatever it is I, initially i was working with people who were in transition that was what i focused on well guess what everybody's in transition so i kind of went well that opens up a few t i you know it, it does people are in transition and those organizations that is endless with them they're constantly in transition so your ability that's what we really are helping people with too is 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 that as well sorry i'll, I'll um, oh and, right and i <laughs> um yeah. And I wanted to just say, you know, whether that's the comments and that, you know, some, someone had said, now I'm, Peter, you had said, I'm, I'm, I'm new to this. I don't really know the answer yet. <laughs> if you, once you know the answer, call me. Um, Cause again, that answer is, is iterative and it evolves and being new again, giving yourself that space and the practice ah. and creating, you know, leveraging the networks you have. Like when we talk about these different strategies, think about them and what you want to use in order to, let's see what you have, the strengths you have, the networks you have, and then how do you get what you need, whether it's information or, Hey, let's talk to someone who's done it before, or, you know, that space for coaching or, Hey, I need some skills or, or, or. So there is, you know, in the chat, I even, encourage some of you to read it because people are sharing who their ideal client is for some of us it's finding that out finding out our niche as we practice as we get more comfortable and allowing it to emerge um, and now I get to talk about or get Allison to talk about one of her favorite things to talk about besides coaching I guess um, is coaching out of the box well um, right and this is this is when we the webinar of course is to raise awareness about what we do and so on because we're we're here to support you in um, growing your confidence and obtaining an ICF credential because we have packaged our programs up and they're all very high quality virtual learning experiences and these are and this is this fits with what we're talking about today these are the various um areas that we've worked in the types of people that we've worked with from coaching at uh, coaching out of the box and here's a, a thing that i think is really important because i i saw a message about somebody who was working with a group of people and the the um you know the the issue around money and value just think Remember, if we are supporting people in moving farther, faster, quicker, easier, better than they would have without a coach, what is the value of that in organizations as well or for that individual? And uh, th this, is, this is what you've got to really pay attention to, is what is it costing them not to work with a coach, not to maybe have a group coaching or team coaching with a team that's having some struggles and challenges. What is that costing when a project's being delayed, deferred, or there's major problems? This is, this is what is so important and so valuable for it. And we've worked in, in all of these different areas on the that you that you see in the screen and in fact we presented key findings to harvard um, medical school mclean hospital and institute of coaching a little while back on the results that were achieved by one large organization who used us and um, presented those findings because they're so important and so valuable and we have a um in our resources area, you will you will see it. It talks about three healthcare systems. The largest one employed 150,000 people. You can you can um, uh, uh, you can go to our resources area and you can uh, get that guide. We we also are going to let you know about another resource that we have that will uh, that's about creating a coaching business and so on, the business of coaching. And so um, we'll let you know about that in our follow up uh, communication and. And um, I'm just trying to think here, what else have I, oh, I know, yes, you can go to the next slide. <laughs> so for some of you who, who are uh, developing yourselves, we have a variety of programs that are coming up. We also, as you can see, support organizations in developing internal coaching capacity, and we also uh, 
support people in becoming licensed to deliver our program uh, that had the fabulous results uh, that were achieved that were with the results that were provided to uh, Harvard Medical School, etc. And um, also, I hope I'm the one who's. Oh, Rosa, I jumped in on this one. Sorry, go back. You, I, I, are you, I, Allison? You, I was gonna say you jumped in on talking about what's next. Um, yeah. That is the yeah. most brilliant thing um, because yeah. you, again, that passion comes into it's like yes, here's the information, and Allison, you're like, yeah, what are you gonna do with it? What are you gonna yeah. do with it, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, one thing I actually did want to talk, uh, mention a little bit, well, um, is when you talk about results, it's also the coaching out of the box results. When you talk about the 18,000 people who've gone through, um, you know, who've gone through one of the programs um, in 38 countries, that you talk about that impact um, to people and then the people who they touch, especially as leaders who are, are dealing or getting these skills. Um, I would encourage you to contact Sandra, use the link again in the information that we send you with the, um, with the, um, all the information, go to the website. There's a bunch of guides. Um, I also know that we're at the top of the hour, but I do want, if anyone hasn't shared, because you've been wonderful in sharing, share in the chat what you're walking away with. Um, because again, that's the, that was our intention. Give you information, give you questions to think about. Um, what are you going to do next? Um, if you want to share that um, in the chat, um, we would love to hear the comments. We always love to hear the comments, whether it's through email or um, again, a chat with Sandra. Being at the top of the hour, um, on behalf of everyone on, you know, from Coaching Out of the Box on this webinar and as part of our webinar series, I wish you all the best as you move forward with your coaching practice and whatever that looks like for you. Thank you for um, sharing your thoughts and joining the webinar. And again, you'll be hearing a recording or you'll be receiving a recording of the webinar. So motivation to keep moving. Um, find my dream, find my vision. Go Sam. Like, yes. <laughs> Allison, anything closing before I just thank walk away? Just thank you for coming and um, and best wishes to everybody and reach out to us, access our resources, take our programs, right. whatever. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you awesome. so much. Bye, everybody. And thanks, Have Rosa. Thanks, Sandra. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Okay.